Good evening. As you probably know, the fifth grade recently took their annual trip to Sharp Reservation, which is in Fishkill, New York. And it is a bit of a rite of passage for our fifth graders because they leave home for two evenings, they're there for three days, and this year it snowed. And there was how much snow? So much snow. <laughs> so much snow. At least a foot of snow, and it came fast and furiously. So it, I think it would, that made it extra special. I went up on Wednesday. Thankfully, there was no snow. Miss Bozius was there on Thursday into Friday. She took the opportunity to buy herself a new jacket. So she <laughs> was prepared for the snow. And I think she did some rolling down Deer Hill in the new jacket. Um, so hopefully it came back OK. And we have some of our students who want to share with you their great experiences. So we're going to start with Eve. <laughs> the kids didn't see the pictures. I made the, power, the PowerPoint this evening, so they may be excited about the pictures. an idea. We went down to 
their cabin. But which one was it? All the cabins look exactly alike. We decided to ask the boys in Miss Kennedy's class. They told us where the other cabin was. We went over to their cabin. Knock, knock. The sound of echoing emptiness on hard wood was sent ringing into our ears. The cabin was dark. Maybe no one's home, Roxanne said. We refused to turn back empty-handed. We built piles of snow outside their door, so when they came back to their cabin, we would be waiting. Ten minutes passed, but it felt like ten hours. Where were they? We got to a point where we couldn't take it any longer. We were not around here to just sit around waiting. We walked over to Kennedy Boy's cabin. Our hands were full to the max with snow. Thud! We rubbed some snow on their door. Thud! Thud! More snow. They opened the door only to see us waiting, and in about to strike position, snow at the ready. They scampered back inside. We heard voices in the distance. Finally! The moment we've all been waiting for. They were here. The second they walked into the open, they found themselves covered from head to toe in snow. They looked like snowmen. Laughing, we ran back into our cabin. I think the most important thing that I learned at Shark was STOP. It stands for Stay, Think, Observe, Plan. We had to do this with the snow, and it's key for when you're lost in the woods. We learned all this from our awesome naturalist, Jill. She taught us lots of important things about surviving in the wilderness, like how to build a fire and a shelter. Thank you for sending us on such a memorable trip. So I should very much sure that all of our students volunteered, and they had to take their own time to write their own writing pieces about Sharp. And Mrs. Lipton, who is our language arts supervisor, helped them tweak it yesterday, and they did practice with us today. I do believe they may have actually gotten some extra credit points um, for some of their classes on this, but it was voluntary, so they're being very brave, I think, in coming and speaking to all of you. Kathleen, you ready? to Sharp Reservation to learn about science and social studies. One of the activities the fifth graders look forward to every year is a game called Predator and Prey. This game demonstrates the food chain. Teams of students, with the help of a teacher, work together with one another to get food, water, and shelter to survive and not get eaten by a group higher up in the food chain than them. The groups are the hawks, who can eat all the other animals below them in the food chain, the snakes, rodents, and the insects, the bottom of the food chain. I was lucky enough to play this game as an insect with Mr. Kosaurus and lots of my friends. We had to get plastic chips that resembled the food, water, and shelter needed to survive. Because we were at the bottom of the food chain, we only needed one of each type of chip. We were unable to, to attack the other types of groups, so we got the opportunity to hide in the snow. Only being able to hide 10 minutes for a spot was a challenge, but with determination, our insect group had enough spirit to survive. We learned that believing in each other, working as a team, and having fun with the essentials in, to this game. Our naturalist, Jill, had given us special chips at the beginning of the game. Although we did not know it then, it was pesticide. It was cool to know the, that the insects affected with pesticides could transfer the poison to other animals that ate that insect. There were no winners in this game, but we learned lots of cool new information. Thank you for sending us. I would like to thank you. I want to thank you for allowing us to go on a trip, field trip to Sharp. The part of Sharp I would like to talk about is pond study. In pond study, I was paired with Ethan Show and Danny O'Neill. In our group, we caught four tadpoles and an aquatic spider. I learned that a pond has a muckier bottom than a lake, which means it has more mud on the ground. All parts of a pond ecosystem are important because all living things eat the bushes and the mud, and the tadpoles eat the plants. I learned there are spiders that live in ponds. The spider floated on water because there are little air bubbles on each of its legs. 
Finally, I learned that there are a ton of pond animals I never knew about before. For example, the water boatman. There's two legs that look like oars. Pond study is my favorite part of the trip because I learned so many new things. Thank you so much for supporting my trip to Sharp Reservation. Sharp was an amazing time. He gave me a lifetime of memories to keep forever. Something at Sharp that had a great impact on me was going on the Pond Stream Trail hike. While we were on the hike, we learned so much about the different kinds of leaves and trees. There are plaques on the different kinds of trees that tell us, us facts about that time. One interesting fact that I learned is that the ash tree's bark is used to make baseball bats. Another thing that happened during the hike was that when we were going to cross the stream, we saw that the bridge detached and was broken. Mrs. Kennedy then found a big fallen tree over the stream, but when some people tried to cross it, it was too slippery. We kept walking along the stream, trying to find another way to cross. Then we found a path of rocks in the water that, would, that we could walk across. One person at a time, we all crossed to the other side. When this happened, we were learning how to compromise and how to be problem solvers. As you can see, we learned so much by going to Sharp Reservation and we made so many memories to keep forever. I'm so grateful to have these experiences and hope that the incoming classes get to have the same experience with each other. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for having a great, great field trip. Sharp is the best field trip I've ever been on. At Sharp, we learned a lot about the Revolutionary War because Joe Ryan comes one night and teaches you many different things. Joe Ryan is a Revolutionary War reenactor who tells that less than 10% of the people on the American side can be rifles. He pulled out both a rifle and a musket and shot both of them outside to, sh to show us how they worked. He told us that he handled both of his guns. He also told us that nice guns men had a woman's name. We also learned that there would be 14 to 15 people that were operating one cannon. He also showed us that there was a video about how people load the guns and that there were 10 groups. They shot one by one, and once the 10th group shot, the first group was reloaded. Joe Ryan told us that there is a legend about the drummer boy. He was in the war, and they were going to try to kill him. They never found him, but later that night, we were drumming at 10 o'clock p.m. We were a little confused because we thought it was thunder. And we went outside to see that it was going to be a Miss Kennedy that was playing a, a drum on the basketball court. Hi. I just wanted to say thank you for making it possible for us to go to shop. I've made so many memories, and I'm going to talk about one of the activities I enjoyed at shop. One of my favorite things about Sharp was going down Deer Hill. It was Thursday, one of the last days, and it was supposed to snow in the, the afternoon. We were all hoping that by the time we got to the top of the hill, it would snow and we could sled down. After lunch, we stepped out in the freezing weather while my nose breathed in the cold air. From my angle, I could see the steep hill we climbed up many times and Beaver Lake on the other side, which was a large lake that you couldn't even see the whole thing. With all of us bundled up in our winter clothes trying to keep warm, we started up and down the steep trails. I watched as the mess hall got smaller and smaller till the trees blocked it. Everywhere you looked, you could see trees. If you were to walk straight out into the woods, you would see what we saw. We were supposed to cross a stream, but there was not a bridge. For me, it was very exciting relying on dead branches and slippery rocks to cross. The stream water was rushing under our feet, while all of us hoping not to fall in the icy cold water. We thought we reached the top and looked out at the view, which was beautiful. In the distance, we could see trees and little houses down below, which they told us was Connecticut. I did not think that we could go any higher, but we did. At the real top, it was Deer Hill. I was a little disappointed that it hadn't snowed yet, but I didn't care. On one side, you saw the hill, and the road, but on the other side, there was this beautiful lake. I cannot even describe to you how pretty it looked. We rolled down Deer Hill. During my second roll, someone exclaimed from down low, It is snowing. They were right. Little tiny snowflakes fell on my hand 
and I once again rolled down the hill. The entire Shark Troop was amazing, but one of our favorite parts was Wilderness Survival. In Wilderness Survival, you learn to make a shelter. You make a shelter with two Y sticks. Y sticks are sticks that are shaped as Y's. You also need a very thick stick. The reason you don't need a thick stick is because you need support for the two Y sticks. You will also need a lot of branches. You will cover the shelter with branches, then you will cover the branches with a lot of leaves. You'll also need leaves to make a bed. You want the bed to be very thick so when you lay on it, you don't sink to the ground. Another thing I learned about shelters is that you should not build your shelter near rocks. You do not want to build your shelter near rocks because rocks want heat and the rocks will take away the heat from your body. Building shelters is one of the ways we learn to survive in the wilderness. One more way is when we think stop. S equals stay, T equals think, O equals observe, P equals plan. Here is another fact about wilderness survival. You can also think the five threes. The first three, within three seconds, you panic. Three minutes, you'll die without air. Three hours without shelter. Three days without water, and three weeks without food. All of this is going to help me because if I ever get lost in the wilderness, I know what to do. Also, if I don't get found and I have to stay overnight, I know how to make a shelter. Shark was the best go field trip ever. Thank you so much for sending us. Our students at OPS have been going to Shark for over 40 years. And it really, truly does take a village for us to organize it. So we thank you, Board of Ed, for continuing to prove this field trip. But we also want to thank our teachers and instructional aides who either chaperoned the trip or did some coverage for teachers and aides who were going to chaperone. And they did that in the snow. We have a number of substitutes that we pulled into the building. Our OPS office staff starts working on organizing the buses for Sharp over the summer because we will insist on buses with seat belts. So we have to get those coach buses lined up, be the first to take them. We, they also coordinated our subs and collected all of the student money. Our parent volunteers are integral to the trip because they come up and spend the night. And this year, our parent volunteers were more than flexible because some had to move cabins, which meant that they weren't necessarily with their sons or daughters. But we had a lot of shifting around because of the weather. And they also drove up to chaperone in the snow. We also had Mr. Antonelli there who was taking a number of our photos. So a lot of our beautiful photos that you've seen this evening are from him. And then we also had parents who shared their photos as well. And then finally our sixth graders, and I don't, now you know fifth graders, you get to do this next year. Our sixth graders pack the buses. So fifth graders bring in all of their gear, line it up in their homerooms, and the sixth graders come out and pack the buses for the fifth grade as kind of a sending off for them. So it was a really success, successful year. I think the snow really added a new element to it, a new experience. Um, and I'm so glad that we got to go into experience. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for volunteering your time and parents for bringing them in to present tonight.
Yeah, so, so I think you hold the record for a while. Do you have a question? No, I just wanted to comment, if I can. Um, the fifth grade teaching staff and then all the other support staff that was there, but they really should be committed. They do such an amazing job. They are so in. I got up there at 4 o'clock on Thursday. Um, you know, it snowed a foot of snow in the next three hours. It was incredible. That made it so much more fun. Um, but I went on this trip 41 years ago, so at least 41 years old. Um, but they just have, I mean, they're so positive and so excited about it, and I think we're just really lucky. Thank you. 
for you guys here, trust me. Did you hear the one dial? Can we go get ice cream now? All right, anything else in your report? Okay, you know what, I'm gonna go to the business administrative report next and I'll go last. Any report? Um, okay, so in my report, uh, I want to turn it over to Ms. Norian first. She has a little announcement. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know um, that a former board member of the Oregon Board of Education <laughs> passed away on Thanksgiving Day. Um, he was a member of this Board of Education for 12 years. Um, so he's uh, a very prominent, had been a very prominent person in our community. Uh, Mark Dance uh, passed away. Um, and uh, it, at least it was a, a quick passing um, because he got very sick. Um, and it was nice to have his whole family together. Uh, he also was a very prominent part of the Chamber of Commerce and uh, with Rita and myself, uh, a member of our Rotary Club, actually a founding member of the Ordell Emerson Rotary. So he will be missed by many. I almost made it. Did you know him on this moment? Mark was an extremely dedicated individual to whatever task he, he took on. And um, I got to know him quite well after I joined Rotary. And the motto for Rotary is service above self. And Mark exemplified that to the T. He was always there when he was needed. And came up with things that were always there to help others. So um, I was honored to have known him for that period of time. And um, he has a beautiful family that I'm sure will be very supportive of his wife's okay, Thank you. What was he a board member, you know? Um, it actually was, yeah, it was. Were you here with him? No, it was in the 80s. It was, I came in at the he actually was a board member for nine years, the first time, um, and then had a hiatus and came back for another three-year term. So in the three-year term that he came back for was when John and I were on the board, um, but he had been a board member before either one of us had started, so that's over 27 years ago. So, um, but he's done a lot for the community. He, he, everyone in town knows him. Um, so um, he will be missed, and our first day, first time that we will really miss him is for our food drive on Saturday, because he would always be the first one to come and help us set up a tent. So. Okay. Um, move along. Uh, I just want to tell everyone when you're speaking into your mic, speak into them, even though we can hear here. If you listen to the video, it's very difficult. So everybody, speak into your mics. Uh, we have in our packets. The board goal info, where is that I think everybody got it. 2018-19 district goals. So the mission statement we sent over to the PR committee, and um, I guess I'm going to take that up in the next meeting because we ran out of time today. We do need to talk about these goals. Do people want to look at it and come back next time and discuss it? Do they want to discuss it today based on what we uh, based on the presentation of last week, feelings of the board. Right. 
Okay, and then um, for levels four and five, you can see that we have uh, percentage goals of numbers of students. We're hoping we can get up to 55 uh, at least in level four. And as we spoke about at the retreat, we're also trying to push students from level four up into level five. So we're trying to go from 81% or, I'm sorry, excuse me, from 29% up to at least 32%. And then, um, in addition, the total number of students passing, that, so that would be students in either level four or five, um, would go from 81% to 87. And then, um, if you look down at math, um, you can see, I won't read all of them to you, but you can see that uh, we did essentially the same thing in math. Does anybody have any comments? Is there a difference between language arts and, and math? Yes. Um, we looked at the levels of student uh, passing rates in each of those levels and then adjusted them either down or up depending on which way they're moving um, accordingly. So I think that all of the targets are rigorous, but I think they're all attainable. So this is for 2019? Yes. Next year. Okay. And then in reference to the second goal, which was um, social and emotional learning, I want to just say one note of explanation to that. So um, the state of New Jersey has what's called the Collaborative for Academic Social and Emotional Learning, which was created by Rutgers University. And it is a collaborative that provides resources uh, to schools um, to facilitate social and emotional learning. And what they have in the attachment that I gave you is a rubric for implementation of a successful SEL program. And so our overall goal is to successfully implement a program by the end of the year. The rubric is the roadmap for how to do that. When we scored ourselves um, to get a baseline, uh, we scored ourselves at a 15 out of a possible 40. And so, well,